Hello, everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 35 through 40. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I am the bread of life, referring to himself in the Eucharist. And if there is, well, the Reformation was a very complicated topic. There were a lot of tragedies. It was a very bloody time period. Lots of warfare, lots of uh, stuff. Truly, it was not a good time for the Christian faith. But one of the really negative, lasting impacts of the Reformation is that there are so many Christians nowadays that think the body and blood of our Lord on the altar is just a symbol we take to remember him. It's not. It's the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ. When we eat and drink, if we had a spiritual magnifying glass we could look under, we, if we, when we consume it, we would see ourselves becoming luminous as Jesus Christ comes to make makes his makes his home with us in our eating and our drinking. He abides in us so that we may abide in him unto the life that is eternal. It is transformative to eat and to drink. To eat and to drink and not be transformed is a sure sign of opposition to God, of, if you don't repent, damnation. That's how serious this thing is. It's not a symbol. No one taught it was a symbol till the 16th century. So Jesus comes to us as it's written. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. Though we are sinners, though we are not worthy, God's love is greater than our sin. He dies as the atoning sacrifice to forgive. He rises again that life may be eternal. We are his. You know, you can say all the bad things you want about us. You wouldn't be wrong. Go, on the, um, go down the list of, oh, you're a gossip, you're a drunk, you're a blah, 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 blah. Yes, guilty as charged. I don't deny it. What I will deny is that God hates us, and God wants to cast us away from him forever. And that's true. Then why did God become a human in the first place? If that's true, then why will all humanity rise with him on the last day? If that's true, then why did he die for our sins? The fact that Christ came, died, and rose means he loves everyone and wants everyone to be saved. Now, if you reject that uh, faith, well, then you're going to hell. But why would you want that? Stay in the faith. And staying in the faith means, certainly, you know, reading the scriptures, praying, confessing your sins, but also getting baptized, where our life begins, and partaking of our Lord's body and blood on the altar. For Jesus said, Whoever eats my flesh, drinks my blood, abides in me, and I in him. It's a sick, twisted world. You need the Lord. But go on without him. Eat and drink and know that he is with you. Let us close with prayer. Lord, thank you for your flesh and blood. Would you forgive us and guide us always? Lord, continue to guide us unto life that is eternal. Amen.